Sorry for the mess. Not sure if you can actually see it or not, but my studio is a freaking disaster right now because I've been doing product shoots, people shoots, video shoots, it's just been crazy. However, it did lead me to an idea for this week's YouTube video because I've been sending proof sheets and client sheets to clients. And uh, there is a really easy way to do this in Lightroom. I've had tons of people ask me, how do, how, what's the best way to send proof sheets? How do I send photos to clients without them stealing it or just simply screenshotting? Well, if you use Lightroom, I'm gonna be using Lightroom Classic. Let me show you the easiest way to do it. There's actually two easy ways to do it. So let's get started. Will Simpson here. Welcome back to Exploring Photography. Always good to see your faces around in these parts. And today we are going over how to send proof sheets via Lightroom. Simple, easy, and effective. No additional software or anything else you need. So let's just dive right into Lightroom and go ahead and get started with the first trick. Here we are in Lightroom, and this is a photo shoot that I did of a couple the other day. And these are all edited. These have already been sent to the client. So let's just say all of these are unedited in this scenario and we want them to pick five or however your packages work. Let's go into print up here in the top right. So here we are in print and this has lots and lots of options. So I understand that it can be very confusing but we're gonna keep it super simple so you can start using this right away. On the right side is templates. Here it's like four by six, four by six and two by three five by seven, whatnot. You can choose the different templates that you want. Four wide, you know, I don't really get into this. I simply have four by six. Now, down here is the important part. It says use selected photos. So if I were to select all of these, now all of these are part of the option. You see, now I can go through them here and I can see each one is on its own sheet. But uh, let's say we don't want all of those on one sheet. We want to mix them up. So if you go on the right side, let's go to image settings first. Zoom to fill, rotate to fit. So let's unselect that, see what happens. Notice how it kind of chops this up here, but we don't necessarily like that. So take off zoom to fill. Now we have the photo. So if you rotate to fit, it's gonna rotate it and put it in a weird way. But for me, if I have a client looking at this sheet, I don't want them to have to like, turn their head, unless I'm giving them a hard copy of this proof, um, like printing this off and giving it to them. I don't want them to have to crick their head to the right and get a, get their neck to be sore or anything to do this. So we're just gonna keep it like that. And now the zoom to fit, well, that does crops in on the photo. I don't want that either. So you just kind of play with these settings to see how you like it. The next thing, we're gonna go into layout. So in this case, you have a lot of options here. Uh, the first one is the margins, like you can move it left and right, you can move it up and down. Again, you know, to play with these as you want. Rows, you can have multiple. Hey there, that, that looks a little better. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. So in this case, this allows you to add multiple photos to the pages. As a personal preference, I like two rows and I like four photos. That just seems to look better. Then you don't have 15 pages with one image, you have one page with four images that they can easily see and decide quickly. Now, some people like spacing and some people don't. This is a personal preference. To me, this looks okay, but I like a little separation between the images. So if we go here to cell spacing next, we can adjust the vertical spacing, then we can adjust the horizontal spacing. That looks a little better to me because it just kind of keeps each image as its own thing rather than blending them all together. For me, this allows me to really focus on the one image, then look at the next image, then the next image without it kind of flowing together. It, it's an organization thing. It's, it's a mind thing. You, you, you know what I'm talking about. All right, the next thing is the cell height. This is how big the cells are, how big the images are. In this case, you just kind of have to play with them to see how you like them. But I pretty much like them to where there's individual cells and they can actually see it, but big enough that they can actually see it. You see? <laughs> okay, the next is the guidelines. Now this is a personal preference altogether. Guidelines are simply guidelines. It shows boxes around the images, which you can then adjust. You can take off the rulers, which I don't care for, the bleed. Um, just kind of shades it a little bit. Don't really care for that. Margins, this is like the little gray lines here. Again, don't care for that. Image cells, 
I personally kind of like the image cells because again, it kind of boxes them out. In this case, it doesn't actually look too well. I think if I change the cell spacing, yeah, a little bit more, and then the horizontal, there we go. Yeah, let's make them actually boxes. That looks better to me. Again, it it creates its own section, which I like. Next is the identity plate. And this is essentially a watermark. Now you'll notice down here, there is another tab for watermark and we'll get into that for in a second. But this is just a simple way to kind of slap on some text to make it easy. It seems easy for me, so I do it. So identity plate, and then you can choose what you want. So in this case, I'm gonna click this little arrow here and then edit, and I'm going to do Will Simpson, and I want it to say photography. If you press enter or return, you'll immediately just save that. So what I learned is if you press option and return, I'm not using a Mac, it'll give you a space below, Then I'm gonna type <laughs> photography, and hopefully I spelled it right. Uh, you can adjust your text, like what you want, let's say we want to do times Roman or something like that, and you want it to be 24, that's fine, then press okay. Now you'll notice it now says Will Simpson Photography. But now I want it to be on the images. In the middle doesn't really help me at all. So you click down here, render on every image, and suddenly it's on every image. But then again, it's a little small. So let's raise the size. So if we raise the size, good. There we go. Now it says Will Simpson Photography over the images. And maybe that's a little too aggressive, so let's lower the opacity. That way they can see the image, but if they go ahead and screenshot this bad boy, it's gonna say Will Simpson photography. So that's not gonna be too good for them posting it. And it kind of saves you. And again, remember this is for you to send to clients for them to say, oh, I want this one, this one, this one, this one. Then you can edit them. You don't wanna send out unedited or raw images and then the client screenshots and say, look at this amazing photo by this photographer. And people are like, is it though? Is it really a, is it really a good image? Because it looks a little faded, not really enjoying that image. I don't think I'm gonna hire that photographer. We don't want that. So this protects you. All right, the next thing is the watermark. Now the watermark, again, it's a little bit different. Let's turn off the identity plate. So let's select watermark. And this allows you to use the watermarks that you have created previously. If you go up to Lightroom Classic, you go into edit watermarks, and then let's say, let's just select WSP1. Uh, let's scroll down here and raise the size so you can actually see it. And there it is. So this is the watermark that let's say we want to be using. So let's save that, uh, freaking cancel it, Never mind. So let's go into watermark and let's use WSP1. Now it's really tiny, like you cannot see it there. So I would have to create a new watermark that fills this screen because that doesn't really help too much. But you can create a specific one for that. This is just why I use the identity plate. It just seems quicker and easier. <laughs> so I don't know, I just, it's a personal preference, I guess. All right, so the next thing is, let's clear all those off. The next thing is the page numbers. So you have these photos here and you know, someone might say, oh, well, I want page two, image three. That's great, but let's make it simpler. Go down to your page options. Let's select that and let's add page numbers. Okay, good, so now we know this is page one. Page two, great, not too helpful. Let's go into page info. Okay, uh, this has sharpening, low, profile, managed by printer, we, they, we don't need that information. Crop marks, uh, don't need that information either. But what about photo info? Let's click that and you see you add the file name. This is much, much easier because then the client can say, oh yeah, I want Y2A5735 edited, please. That's a mouthful. <laughs> okay, so let's go into file name. Now you can do caption. You, that doesn't do anything. You can do custom text where you can enter in your custom text. Uh, okay, what do you want your custom text to be? Uh, file. Great, well that doesn't help because, okay, file, they're all in the name file, that doesn't help. Okay, date. Okay, they were all taken on the same date, that doesn't help. Equipment. You see where this is going, okay. So the easiest way to do this is to simply use the file name. Now, yeah, it might be a little bit complicated for the client to say this, but realistically, if you save your raw files as the file name, it'll be easier for you, the client will get over it. <laughs> but this gives you an easy way for the client to say, oh, I want this file and you know exactly what image because hopefully you're a little bit organized. All right, next thing, um, this is important here. 
if you are doing a digital proof, if you're sending this to a client via email or uh, even like sending this via a text, this is an important step. This right here, I'm gonna go ahead and turn on identity plate so you actually really see the full effect. Right here where it says print to, do you wanna print as a JPEG file or do you want as a print as to the printer? Now, if you were printing these, actually printing these, you would select printer. However, you would also select printer if you want to do a PDF, and I'll show you that in a second. But first, we're gonna go through the JPEG. So this is where you can do the file resolution, where you can do print sharpening. In this case, I'm not gonna select that because these are edited and I don't want it to re-edit. If you are sending raw files, you probably don't want it to add sharpening either because you want them to just see the images and if they're edited files, you probably don't wanna add sharpening because you probably did that in the edit yourself. Uh, it's, it's just do it yourself. Uh, the next is the quality. As these are proofs, you want them to be good enough quality for them to see it, but it doesn't have to be the best of quality. So in this case, let's just leave it at about 70%. I find that 60, anything below 70% kind of add, can add some waves, some lines. So keep it 70 to 80%, it's totally fine. Uh, custom dimensions. I just want them to see the photos. Uh, profile, sRGB is fine. Print adjustments, we don't need to make any of those. So then we're gonna click print to file and give it a name, sample proofs one, save. And then up here you notice preparing print job. And once it's done, you should have a folder in there named what you named it. And there are all of your proofs. Now we had 10 images. So here is the first four, eight, and 10. So you can then take this and you can send it off via text, email, dove, pigeon, smoke signal, however you want, and then your clients can review their photos and with confidence and safety know that they will have to come back to you to get the final products. Now that is option one, super simple. Next is how to do a PDF. And this is actually my preferred method because it's one file rather than multiple JPEG files. It just seems easier for me and the client. But first, I wanted to take a quick minute and thank all of my patrons right here. I just created a Patreon. So if you wanted to support the channel and all of these amazing free YouTube videos that I do for you, I'll put a link in the description. There's actually a limited number tier that has a monthly coaching call. So if it's not full already, I highly recommend going to check it out and get involved so you get that monthly coaching call. In addition, if you want some free Moody presets, actually some of the ones I used on this photo shoot specifically, if you like that style, I will put a link in the description for free Moody presets. All you do, is click the link, fill out your email, and they will be emailed right to you. Check your spam or promotional folders, and uh, yeah, then they'll be emailed right to you. Okay, good. Let's get back into the next step, which is the PDF file. Uh, let's scroll up back to the print job. We're going to select JPEG file and change this to printer. Now, once you've selected printer, you don't need to worry about any of this because you're not printing them. If you are printing, actually physically printing these proof sheets, then you might have to mess with some of these, but this is not that video. Next, we wanna to go to printer. And this is gonna give us these options. Again, you don't need to mess with any of this here. You wanna go down to PDF. And just as a note, if you are using Windows, this is gonna be slightly different. I'm using an, a MacBook Pro 2019 and it has a built-in PDF driver for this. If you're using Windows, it is still possible, but you might have to Google it or search and see how to do it because I'm not 100% sure. But if you're using a Mac, this should be right here. You click PDF, save as PDF. Again, we're going to save it in the sample here. Save as sample proofs PDF and press save. Good, and then you'll see up here that it is preparing print job, piece of cake. And we wait, we twiddle our thumbs. <laughs> and when it is done, it, you'll notice that it has popped up right here. Go ahead and open this up and you'll notice here are our awesome photos in a smooth, simple, easy to use and share file where the client can open it up and boom, there are all their files. And that is the easiest way to send your proof sheets and your comp sheets to your clients. That way they can see, make their selects, choose what photos they want, and they can't just easily screenshot them and then show your raw files as your completed work because ew. 
Ew, no one, no one wants to see that. That's disgusting. <laughs> Anyways, go ahead and like the video. If you have any questions or comments, you know where to, you know what to do. And uh, subscribe if you haven't already. But anyways, happy Valentine's. Oh yeah, it's Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day. Like, that's a thing. I'll see you guys next week. <laughs>